Hi there, Daily Bread audience. Great privilege for me to be bringing you something from God's Word again today. This week, we're tracking with seven assuring truths about Jesus the Savior. Normally, I'd be going to a different one for this day, but it's Ascension Day. The day, 40 days after Easter, where we celebrate the ascension of Christ into the heaven, where as King, He rules and reigns. So, this week, we're covering these seven truths. I've wanted these to be ingrained into my children's lives. These are school run truths. At the beginning of each year, or at the beginning of some semesters, I go through these in a week with my children because I want these deeply embedded in their minds and their hearts. The ascension of Jesus the King. We're going to read from Acts chapter 1, verse 7, where it's described his ascension. He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way you've seen him go. Well, what an amazing thing. He's been raised, he's been ascended, and he's disappeared from their sight into the clouds as described here in Acts chapter 1. Angels appear and say he will return in the same way that they've seen him go. Jesus' work continues on the earth through his body. Now, you might ask, why didn't he stay and continue his work? Well, we get invited into that great privilege. But you might then ask, how is it that we could possibly hope to accomplish what Christ wants to accomplish on this earth? A great question. The ascension answers that question too. And for that, we're going to turn to Ephesians chapter 4 and read from 7. It says in verse 7 of Ephesians chapter 4, But grace was given to each one of us. In other words, to every one of us, a grace has been given. How could he leave his body to accomplish his work? Grace has been given to us. So it goes on to read, according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. He's quoting from the Old Testament there. In saying he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also descended down to the lower regions, to the earth itself. He who descended is the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip God's people for the works of service, for building up of the body of Christ until we could attain. So there are many things which flow from this gifting which he gives. It enables us to be equipped as saints that we can attain to the full measure that we can be, stable and secure, not tossed by every wind and change of doctrine as it goes on to read in that passage. So there's wonderful truths regarding the ascension. He's ascended, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, it says in the book of Hebrews. From there, he rules and reigns, and he ever lives to make intercession for those who turn to him. And also, here in Ephesians, Paul applies a passage from Psalm 68, saying that he's led captivity captive and he's given gifts to men. Well, let's go and have a look at what Psalm 68 says, just briefly. Psalm 68 and verse 18 is the verse quoted there in Ephesians 4, and it says... You ascended on high, leading a host of captives in your train and receiving gifts among men, even among the rebellious. Psalm 68 verse 18. Well, the amazing thing about what Paul does here is by the Spirit's inspiration, he actually changes the wording of Psalm 68. You see, what is pictured in Psalm 68 is a general who has conquered and he's leading captivity. He's leading the captives which he's taken. And it says in Psalm 68... That he receives gifts from them. In other words, the booty of the battle belongs to the conquering king. However, the way Paul pictures it and the way Paul represents it in Ephesians chapter 4, he leads us, the rebellious captive, we become his. We become joined to his army and he takes us to be his people. But instead of taking booty from us, he gives gifts to us. This such is the graciousness of our God, such is the graciousness of our Savior, that he includes us. In his purposes, he includes us, he leaves us as his body on this earth to accomplish his purposes. And in order to fulfill that task, 
He pours grace upon us and he gifts us with various gifts. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, Paul, as he writes to the Corinthians, says there are varieties of gifts. There are many gifts. He's gifted us all in many wonderful ways. Let's give thanks to him for these wonderful gifts that he's given us. What an honor, what a privilege to be included in his purposes. So he's ascended on high. He's seated next to the right hand of the Father. He ever lives to make intercession. He's led captivity captive, even amongst the rebellious. He, he takes them into his purposes. And by his grace, he gifts us to accomplish his purposes. Lord, we want to thank you that we're included in your purposes, that you've ascended, that you're seated on high, and that you've given us grace and gifting to accomplish your purposes. Thank you, Lord. Amen.